Democratic presidential candidates are back on the campaign trail today after their latest debate. Ten candidates took the stage last night in Atlanta, including the frontrunners, Joe Biden, Elizabeth Warren, Bernie Sanders, and Pete Buttigieg. The latest CBS News Battleground tracker poll has Buttigieg surging in Iowa, where caucuses are now less than three months away. And with impeachment in the headlines, the candidates drew contrast between themselves and President Trump. Unlike previous debates, they focused less on sparring with each other and stuck more to the issues. But there were some tense moments, including when Kamala Harris slammed Tulsi Gabbard for criticizing the Democratic Party. It's unfortunate that we have someone on the stage who is attempting to be the Democratic nominee for president of the United States, who during the Obama administration spent four years full time on Fox News criticizing President Obama. She cannot challenge the substance of the argument that I'm making, the leadership and the change that I'm seeking to bring in our foreign policy, which only makes me guess that she will, as president, continue the status quo. Joining us now to break down last night's debate, CBS News political con contributors Robbie Mook and Terry Sullivan. Robbie was Hillary Clinton's 2016 campaign manager, and Terry was Marco Rubio's 2016 campaign manager. And looking into your eyes, I know it was a long day in politics yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> right. Into the evening we went, uh, and we're 74 days away from, uh, from Iowa, the first uh, caucus. Uh, so, Terry, debate number five last night, what stood out? You know, I, I was pretty surprised. I thought we were just giving away free health care. I didn't realize we were giving away homes, too. <laughs> I mean, I was shocked by, I mean, the continued run to the left in this, in this Democrat primary when they don't really need to, I don't think, in order to engage President Trump. But, but they are giving away a lot. So former President Obama, there was some tape that came out recently of him saying the party uh, is running a risk if it goes too far to the left, that Americans don't want revolution. You think revolution was still on the table last night? Look, I think revolution is fine, but just don't take it away from everybody and give away free houses. I just, I mean, it seems like... I'd take just, a free house. Yeah. Well, I, I would too, but I'd like a boat. Actually. We have a housing but, you know. segment right. coming up. Uh, 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 Robbie, I, 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 we saw the, the battleground tracker poll in Iowa, which is basically, it's like a four-way tie, but yeah. a big surge for Buttigieg. What is, I mean, does that signal that the moderates are looking for another candidate? I think you're going to continue to see churn and hesitation, shall we say, in the electorate. The number one driving issue here for Democrats is they want a winner. They want someone they know who can go in and defeat Donald Trump. And I think people are unsure. Look, we saw this in 2004 when George W. Bush was up for re-election, yeah. you know, and we had candidates kind of hovering, and then John Kerry came in at the last minute and, whoop, you know, he, he rose up. So, uh, honestly, until we get to January, I think these polls, you know, are, are just academic, frankly, and, you know, will continue to evolve. But to that point, you have Joe Biden, who's a top-tier candidate, but we continue to see him make these sort of gaffes and, and have these imperfect debates. How does that affect his standing? Even as we watch some yeah, of but he, other he's always had these gaps. I mean, this is nothing new. I mean, and I don't think it hurts him. So uh, this is one of those situations where you know folks want to want to hang on on. Oh goodness, he said this, or he he made this mistake, or is he too old? Look, I, I think the the issue that he's got is he looks out of touch, and it's not about a gaff. It's it's about just being out of touch on a policy standpoint. But, but in terms of a debate where you need to condense your thoughts and, and and speak in sound bites, is he doing it as well as the other candidates on the stage? Absolutely not. But you know what, Marco Rubio probably did the best of any of the debates. Uh, uh, for, for the Republican primary in 2016, and we all know how that ended. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we've got, um, still we've got Michael Bloomberg lurking on the side lines, Robbie, uh, sorry, uh, Deval Patrick, who just jumped in, um, but they're not in the debate stage. Can they actually play in this game if they're not in the debates? Well, these are two very different candidates. You know, time is the most precious resource on a campaign. And Deval Patrick doesn't have a lot of time. And I think it's going to be really hard for him to put together the resources to run a real campaign. Bloomberg, on the other hand, I mean, this man is worth almost $60 billion. Uh, you know, D Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama spent $1 billion on yeah. their respective general election campaigns. So he can get in whenever he wants. And I think he's going to watch and see if who he perceives to be a moderate candidate is washed out and he needs to step in to fill that role. I think that's that's what his strategy is. Michael Bloomberg has been watching to see with his toe in the water for, what, a decade now? Yeah, I mean, yeah. at the end of the day, yeah. this is the only guy who's actually trying to out there spending money to get on ballots in states and hasn't even announced yet. Yeah. How do candidates do a good job of balancing not being too focused on the impeachment hearings, but also talking to voters about the issues, the things that affect them? 
Go ahead. I was going to say you heard that on the stage last yeah. night. You had some candidates actually pushing back and saying, let's not talk about this. You know, and, and, and I think that's right. Impeachment is out there. People don't yeah, need to right. hear more about it. Right. They all agree. They all agree that what Trump did was wrong and criminal. Um, I think they're right to focus on issues. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, look, it, it's not and it's not just that uh, it's not going to help them in the Democrat primary, but it's also not going to help them in a general election with swing voters who are undecided on it. And if they and if the things they need to say about impeachment in a Demo to win a Democrat primary, will turn off general election swing voters who aren't fully decided on it. All right, Robbie Moak and Terry Sullivan, thank you guys so thank much you. for joining us.